Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, welcome to Talk Cocky with me. Talk Cocky With Me is proudly sponsored by McCraw Media. McCraw Media is owned and operated by fellow Gamecock Sidney McCraw. Sidney has been a Gamecock fan since birth and grew up going to USC football games. She has a BSBA in marketing from High Point University and is at the forefront of social media marketing. Sidney has been working in the marketing industry for the past four years and decided to start her own agency. McCraw Media uses analytics to study your target market and industry and builds a personalized marketing plan to grow your business or brand faster than the competition. McCraw Media has four different plans of service. They provide strategic, tactical, operational, and a flex plan that allows them to be flexible for all. Contact McCraw Media today to see how they can help grow your business at McCrawmedia at gmail.com. That's M-C-C-R-A-W media at gmail.com or 803-517-2441. Mention Talk Cocky with me and get a free market breakdown included in your initial consultation. What's up, everybody, and welcome back. If we seem a little ticked off and frustrated, it's because we have had multiple technical malfunctions and difficulties getting this thing started. My computer decided that it wanted to do some update for about 30 minutes when I didn't even click for any updates. Uh, so then we finally got in here. Steven was having some mic issues. Chuck's just getting drunk. Uh, but, but yes, as y'all can see, we've got the usual Chucky Chuck back. I don't know where that came from. I'll never call you Chucky Chuck again. And uh, and then the newcomer for this week is Steven, a.k.a. Cocky Steven. AKA Carolina cabinets. Yes, sir. The the best in the biz. If y'all ever need any cabinets, damn, I'm about to give away a free ad. If y'all ever need any <laughs> custom cabinets and everything, give him a buzz. He's awesome. Um, Anything custom made. I want to say something very inappropriate there, but I won't. <laughs> What's stopping you? I don't know. I'm Fair afraid enough. with as as irritated as I am, it will go from like R to just you know <laughs> above and R. beyond. Yeah, yeah. Above and beyond. Um we'll throw another shout out to uh Carolina Prince again. Uh, so if y'all have seen they have officially released their first shirts. And I'm not even gonna say it because I don't think I'm gonna make it down to the event, but there's potentially a in-person event coming up, but I don't think it's going to work out just too short of a window. But anyway, let's talk some, some football. Absolutely. Let's do it. This is like Christmas. So it's, you know, the the difference a week can make. This time last week, we were all, oh, are we ever going to win another game? It was terrible. Uh you know, th this week I think we all kind of have gotten that past us a little bit, a little bit of a better game Saturday. Uh, Steven, you're the newbie. We'll let you hit it off. What are your kind of initial thoughts after the, the Furman game? Big win. Definitely needed it. The whole team needed that confidence builder. It was great to see Huntley get in there and rally the defense and just mm -hmm. stop them after 14 points. I think we got some players on the field and we got to see what we have for the future. And the mm -hmm. future is bright. Mm -hmm. I mean, Mario Anderson, DJ Braswell, Sellers. We've got what it takes 
to be at the top echelon in the few coming years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Chuck? Well, I, I think for me, you know, I, I was a defensive guy when I played in high school, and, and I think defense sets that the That was when the forward pass still didn't exist in football. No, it, no, it was, but it was like it was a penalty if you dropped it. Um, uh, but I think the defense sets the tone, and, and I think, you know, when they scored 14 points, for me, this was a – like my football coach would tell me, this is a nut check time. You know, like was it Cam Smith last year? So I'm going to drop mm -hmm. you nuts. Drop this was a drop you nuts moment. Mm -hmm. And I think when when Boogie pulled them all together, and he's like, "This is Furman." Yeah. You know, this is Furman. You know, and and they held. You know, they didn't score any points till the those, the end of the ball game when they had that fumble on like what the ten or something yeah. going in. And that, I mean, I said to me. The, the, that just just uh, it, that just affects the the gambling, you know, the, you know the, the point spread, you know the, that doesn't have any bearing on the game. Well, I don't, I don't, I don't think that actually messed up any of the point spreads. No, I, yeah. I don't know, I don't know what the spread was that game, but, but I, yeah, I, I think it was beyond. I don't that. Think <laughs> but usually those touchdowns do. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I mean, the thing that that I like the most, you know, we got people on the field, we got, we were able to score enough points. You know, I mean, Spencer played two and a half quarters. And then for a quarter and a half, we had second, third, fourth string. We had four, three different quarterbacks after five. Five. Okay. Uh, so, so, well, so down the depth. So it was Spencer, Doty, Lenoris. Uh, Gaithier uh, played two snaps. Tanner came in and Gaithier came in. But yep. Lenoris is, we need to talk about him. We'll get there. By, you know, yeah. in of itself. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get that one. And <laughs> and I'd actually posted it the other day, you know, both of y'all bring up Boogie. And I really think that's what the defense has been missing the last few years. Yes, we, we've had some good guys here and there and some good plays. Uh, but you think about – or you think back to those early 2010 teams oh. and, and what you had was that leader. You had swag. You had – you know, Eric Norwood. Nor Eric, Eric Norwood yeah. was, yeah. was, was the first one because he goes back, to 20, goes back to 2009. Yep. He stepped up. He was the leader of that defense. You know, he was and, the and guy. We've missed like, that for so many years. Even yes. before him, defense has yeah. never had that that vocal guy. Because, um, I mean, I, you're, you're right. And, I mean, it's like the quarterback is invariably the leader of the team because mm -hmm. he's, the, he's the guy. But – when you break it down into halves of the ball, you got to have that defensive guy. I mean, generally it's a, it's a linebacker because yeah. they're quote unquote, the quarterback of the defense, but right. we you just need somebody, had, right. We haven't had that get in your face. Listen here, you know, we're better than this. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you, Jordan Strawn showed a little bit against yes, Furman. He did. We need yes. that. He, he showed a little I'm, attitude. 100% agree. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. We but, need that swag. Yep. Yep. And, and that that's what you got to have to be that next level of a defense. You know, you brought up Cam last year. You know, he had some some penalty issues at times because of his energy, but so did swag. Exactly. And, I mean, I was in the stands when when, <laughs> when, when DJ hit us for 45. Oh yeah, and, then and those are the down. best forty-five yards of penalties I've ever seen in my life. Well, it, and that's the thing too. I don't get me wrong. When I played sports, <laughs> and still, I'm a trash talker. I love it, but you also there's a time when it's mm -hmm. third and two, and you make a stop. That ain't the time to get a flag, right? No. Uh, so, so that's always just kind of my thing with with defensive players and stuff. Like, yes, you got to have that chip. Yes, you got to be in their face. You also got to understand where you're at in the game and, and don't let it be on that down that's really, really going right, to kill you. Right, right. Um, I mean, yeah. But, I mean, but just back like to the – DJ, just like when DJ hit – what's his name at Clemson, they already yeah. got the first down once 15 yeah. more. Didn't didn't matter. <laughs> right. And and back in those days, it didn't matter. It didn't matter. It didn't matter. <laughs> it was like – handing out beans like candy on Halloween. It, it, yeah. it was the uh, – it was the Arkansas game that will never get old. The wannabe targeting call, and then he pick six, takes it to the house, and then chucks it. Well, oh, it was, we got to play. Who cares? Was, Who cares? Well, it was three penalties, right? It was a targeting, 
Pass it was interference. A pass yeah. interference. And then he picked sixed it yep. for the unsportsmanlike and chucked and it. Threw yeah. it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, couldn't happen um, to a nicer bunch of people. <laughs> but uh, it, it's good to see Boogie, you know, because I think for the last few years, you know, everybody's been waiting on him to take that next step. Yes, and, yes. and last year he was primed for it. Very yeah. injury ridden season, uh, and, and I'm sure him, him himself would even say getting into this year at least game wise. Mentally, he's probably like, you know, I, I've got to get back in there before I can be that guy. You know, yes. I can't come yes. off the injury list and then instantly be like, okay, well, I'm the leader of the group. Um, so it, it was good to see him at that point in the game say, hey, we've yeah. got to step up. I mean, I mean, it, it was really good for me to see somebody step up and thinking about the defense and the team in, in its totality – and not well to have this mentality where well, I'm doing my job, I'm I'm yep. minding my gap. Yep. He was looking at the other 10 players on his side of the ball, and he was saying, you know, he was like, We are better than this. Yep. We gotta nut up, we gotta do this. Yep, 100 percent right? Yeah, and it's and I think uh, like back with uh, DJ, a lot of that was what can I do? What's gonna benefit me, right? And mm -hmm. now with Shane Beamer. We're a family. Yeah. Like we're looking out for the guy next to us. That's right. And that's yeah. big time. Yeah. I don't remember uh, who it was that posted it. Uh, Cause y'all you know, I, I like to give props to whoever it is. Uh, somebody had actually made the, it may be in uh, Fisher had a uh, Fisher or famous, whichever one. Um, but they'd posted a video from Xavier's pick late in the game. And they said, if you, if you actually watch this play, Pup has his hands on the ball, but him and Xavier at the same time grab it. Mm -hmm. Pup gets hit. He falls over. Well, typically you would see a guy get up, you know, he's, ah, you know, I had it in my hands. I missed it. No, Pup jumped up. He was smacking, you know, smacking him on the chest. Yeah, yeah. Yes. You know, he was happy for him right. that he got the play. And they're like, this is the caliber of guys That's, Shane Beamer's right. agree. Yeah. Right. And it's just like one of the things that like earlier in the game is when when Doty scored his touchdown, when he got, you know, the pass, you know, you brought up, you know, in our in our group. That team rallied around him. They were yeah. happy. There was nobody upset because they should have got the touchdown. They were they rallied around him, you know, and they were happy for him. That to me just shows that that family atmosphere and those guys look out for one another. And honestly, to me, that's the things that greatness is built on. Yeah, and, and that uh, – I'm glad you brought it up. I meant to put it in my notes, but like I do, I forgot. Eh. Uh, I did want to actually point that out because <laughs> I know I said last week that Doty going to wide receiver and DK going to running back, I'm not saying it was – but it could kind of put off the feeling of, well, you know, they did things the right way yeah. and you they're know, getting let, rewarded. Let's get, get them out yes. there. There may be others right. deserving, but you know, let's do this. And, and I'd said, if that's what's going on, the team's going to see that and the team's yes. going to resent it and it's going to crumble. You know, that, that is what will kill a locker room. That's, that's a that's a locker room killer. You're right. When Doty caught that touchdown, I saw absolutely zero of that. Right. I saw basically that entire team meet him in the end zone, mm -hmm. and that told me all I needed to know. Because he, he caught the ball in the end zone. We were sitting in section one, and I couldn't see the number who caught it. I was like, that was a beautiful pass. You know, he caught it. There was separation. Mm -hmm. And I saw it was Luke Doty. I was like, he kind of like made me more proud. And then when I saw the team was rallying around him, that ratcheted up even more yeah, yeah, yeah. because that goes back to that family atmosphere that Shane is building. And, you know, I, it just made me proud to be a Gamecock. Yeah. Yeah. And, talk about like how it, easy he caught that ball. Oh, it was like, crazy. I mean, like, well, and he was just kind of like, that was, goes, it like, was like that was the easiest catch ever. He was mm -hmm. gliding. Yeah. That it, was insanely nice. We and needed that. We well, needed every minute. And that was one, too, like in the past, if a DB ever falls down and we have a guy wide open, 
the quarterback's going to throw it into the student section. You're like, what are you doing? Right. What are you doing? Uh, right. You know, I, as much as I hate to say that, I've seen that a lot of times. <laughs> oh, many times, yeah. I, well, that that's always kind of been what I say about Jake uh, Bentley. Bentley. Like, if you put Bentley on the run, he will kill you 65 yards down the field, put one on the money. You you give yeah. him you give him ten seconds. Yeah. You give him you ten Jake seconds Bentley and a wide open behind. wide receiver, it ain't going nowhere near the, the guy. And that was that was his fault. Was he made those difficult plays just look so stupid easy, but he couldn't make the easy play. Well, it, it, I mean, it, yeah, I want to. And I, I like Jake Bentley. You know, th- this I is not a, a, a. He did, like he did a lot for us. He did a lot for us. I know a lot of people think it's fun to criticize him because his dad was on the staff, but the kid, kid could, as Stephen <laughs> Garcia would say, the kid could spin it. Yeah, yeah. He just couldn't tone it down, yep. and that's what you saw with with Doty too. When when he came in, that short route, and even with him to have been here for so long, that little five yard crossing pa- pattern. He can't figure out how to not throw it 100 miles an hour. Right. And, and, so, and I think that's where it's, you know, as far as quarterback's concerned, he can't dial that one down, but he's too good of an athlete to keep him off the field. So we've got to get him the ball one way or the other. Right. Yeah. I mean, um, I, I I remember, I mean, I'm, I'm dating myself here. Um, like I remember when Dan Marino was in college, you know, he threw the ball – there was there was no touch. He wasn't making Hootie cry at that point. No, no, he was throwing. I mean, he was hitting him in the chest, you know, and that little, you know, in the slant, the cross. I mean, if they didn't catch it, it's because it didn't lodge in their shoulder pad, you know. So I mean, and I think Doty's the same way, but I think there's a different breed of wide receiver that these guys need that touch on the ball to catch yeah. it. Whereas back then, you know. They, they they cut their teeth on catching cannon shots. Mm-hmm. Yep. You know, um, but you're right. I think it Doty has one 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 uh one speed. Yep. WFO. And it and it ain't always bad. <laughs> That's right. I agree. That's right. It, it ain't always a bad thing. Just That's unfortunately right. on the five yard routes. That's right. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Bad. Uh, <laughs> but what about the offensive line? What what, what do we think on that one, Steven? Bob Alade looked amazing. Like he needs to stay right where he was. Trayvon Ba, I'd love to see him start in the same spot. We keep the left side like it was at the end of that Furman game. I think we got something to work with. You well, gotta let crazy. the freshman play. Well, what's crazy about it too is they weren't even on the two deep for the North Carolina right. game. Marquis Anderson exactly. was. He he's been a little banged up. Um uh, and, and obviously, I think the game plan all year was to get some of these bigger linemen some playing time. Uh, but Marky Anderson's the one that really everybody's raving in this oh, yeah. uh, on this freshman class of, of linemen. He's been out, and then these two guys come in, and everybody's like, "Holy smokes!" Uh, Bob Alade's size and athleticism is, yeah, I mean, off the charts. Yeah, and it, it's it's. It's frustrating as a fan to say we have to be patient because you see we've got Spencer Radler, the best quarterback talent, the best arm talent and everything, you know. Right. I'm not crowning him the greatest quarterback we've ever had. Uh, mm-hmm. But arm-wise, I'll, I'll say the best quarterback we've ever had. And as, Steven as far as, and Connor would agree. Yeah. As far as being able to make those throws the way that he is. Um so it's frustrating to say, hey, you know, let, let's look at the future when Rattler's gone and Juice is gone and all these guys are gone. But you look at these freshman linemen, you look at this this year's class of linemen, you know, what, number three, four, and five offensive linemen. Mm-hmm. we got the number two guy coming in, Kentucky gang. Yeah. I mean, we are literally, and this ain't stretching the word, we are literally building an elite oh. offensive line. Oh, absolutely. I, I think, you know, we as fans, you know, we see what we're getting. Say we get the number two wide receiver, he can come in and start and yeah. not miss a beat. The, you know, the problem is well, – it's not really a problem, but you say, well, we got number three offensive tackle coming in. 
development, developmental, and getting you got to get the weight, and you got to get the, you gotta get the muscle thing. at that level. Yes, yes. Offensive line, right. yeah. that is to, as freshman right. versus wide if, receiver. If we, if we yeah. bring in a freshman offensive lineman and, and inspect him to you know start from day one, he's either one a Michael or caliber offensive tackle, or we're in dire straits because it yeah. takes a year. To two years to get that development to to be a Division One offensive lineman. Yeah. Well, and, I think and you're also not down. seeing that many. You're not seeing 250 to 300 pound defensive linemen in high school. And if no. you, and if you are, you're seeing one in your county. Right. right. That's right. You know, I mean, so, so like, you I might mean, have one like, hard game, but you're not having. They're going to Arkansas. Right. I mean, it's like <laughs> Alabama. Look, look yeah. at, I mean, I mean, look at the offensive lines that Alabama has had. That is not by happenstance. Oh, they, no. culti- they cultivated a culture of, 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 of making the effort to recruit offensive linemen and develop offensive linemen. Mm-hmm. That, that is not an overnight process. Mm-hmm. And I think what we're doing now is exactly what Alabama did. Exactly. We are getting the offensive line talent. We are developing them to where we can put them into um, in, in a position to succeed and not a, a position to fail. Yeah. And I think, too, I you know, a lot's been said recruiting-wise and, oh, well, we're getting the elite linemen or we're getting, you know, all these people at DB and we're stacking up here and stuff, but we're not going after the running backs or the wide receivers or whatever positions. To win in the SEC, you have to win in the trenches. You yeah. can well, have – you can have the so greatest wide receiver on the planet, but he ain't catching the ball if your quarterback gets hit. And I, 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 I said this earlier today, and I've said this on this podcast. Two things. You recruit from the inside out. Yep. You know, lineman, yep. running back, line, you know. And then it doesn't matter if you have Joe Montana in the backfield. If, if he's he can't on his ass, ball, he can't throw it. Right. So, so I think, you know, getting that recruiting from the inside out and then center to the out is because how many, how many wide receivers do we take? Three? Well, but that's the thing too. Three. Yep. But how many offensive linemen do we take? All of them. We are going to take every (laughs) single one. Exactly. Exactly. Because, 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 because the problem with offensive linemen is, you have to take a lot of them. Say you take ten to find one. You hope five pan out because it's such a difficult position to recruit and to evaluate talent. Well, and that's one thing I loved about Eric Wolford. He might have been the best offensive line coach that we've had in the last three decades. I agree. Because I remember Except the John for Hunt tenure number two. I mean, you remember Spurrier kept John Hunt like six years longer than he should have. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so well, I, well, the other thing in like today's age too, as we're seeing, you you build that that core on the line. You right. can go to the mm-hmm. portal and grab some receivers. Oh, one hundred percent, and you can plug them in. As we are seeing, it's hard to build a line from the portal because yep. they're not used to playing with each other. That's what I keep telling everybody. With week, it sucked. Yes, week one was terrible. That was the first game experience these guys have ever played with each other. Yeah. yeah. Three of them, the first game they've ever played in, in Garnet Black. Right. And and the other two had never started in the position in which they were starting in. Right. So we had a brand new offensive line, guys that I mean, yeah, they had to be nervous out the yin yang. And then as the game's coming to them. Oh shoot! They get pushed back on their heels, literally. You know, once that snowball starts, it's hard to turn that back around. Right, and, and the thing that, 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 that I mean, I, I watched highlights of the game. I didn't, I didn't watch it because I was I was at another game. Um, uh-huh. <laughs> my question is this: We know that you either run to set the pass. Or you pass to set the run. Mm-hmm. That that is offense mindset in a, in a nutshell. You know, we talk about like I remember back in the Spurrier days, they would roll Stephen Garcia out to get put him in a position 
to succeed to where he had time to throw the ball. You know, why are we – honestly, I, I thought I – th- I thought Mark said if it was calling the game again. Why are we running tackle to tackle when we struggle at times? Given the, yeah. the, given the way that this offensive line is young, why don't we spread this out to get in space – and then that will allow us to run the ball, even if we don't even run it successful. But what it will do, it will spread everybody out and it'll create pockets mm-hmm. where you could pitch and catch that where Spurrier was like a, a genius at. And then what that did, that opened up the back of the defensive backfield to where you can take that shot down. The yeah. Yep. Let him creep you know, in. I mean, I mean, I know those guys have forgot more about football than I know. And and I give that. It was just like I, I would like for somebody to explain that. I, I think it's the same argument. I think it. Yep. I think it's game one. Everybody was trying to get the kinks worked out. Yep. Uh, it. I absolutely hate this saying. No, I, honestly, I think honestly, I think if we played firm in week one, we win and get the kinks. We might not have scored whatever it was Agreed. against Furman. Yeah. But I think we we had a would have had a better shot against yeah. North Carolina. Well, we and it was yeah. agree. It was the perfect storm against us. They had all these guys that are upperclassmen on the, the D-line that mm-hmm. most had been injured, but experienced guys. We had a brand-new front for the very first game. Of course, you're playing in these games years in advance, but in 100 years, I would never take a Power 5 game with a brand-new offensive line. I don't even care who's on the offensive line. Yep. I agree. Because that's what North Carolina did. They brought the heat the entire game. That's it, yeah. And, and they, they they tricked and us. they yeah. yeah and they said hey we're gonna go man to man outside if you beat us you beat us but you're gonna to have to beat us in half a second that's right, right. that's right and they kept showing right side dropping back yeah, yeah. bringing left it, side it, it was yep. it was a good plan um, it was yep I was gonna hit on something you were saying but I don't remember what it was now <laughs> but anyway uh, as we were talking about some of those younger linemen though let, let's go ahead and, and rip the band aid off. Mr. Lenora Sellers. Okay, so when he when he made that that long pass to is it Elliot eight yards Lewis. Uh, uh, no, who was it? Tashawn Russell. Yes, Russell, Russell. Russell. So I was, our seats were like on Rotel. We were like almost like ground level. Like I could, when he threw the ball, I I didn't I couldn't tell. I, I mean, when they threw it, I was like, that guy's got a fucking cannon. Because it was like it was a yards. laser. Uh, and, he didn't even and, try. Yeah. And it was like he run out, he stopped. I mean, how many times have we had a quarterback that goes back there and has happy feet that look like you know they're he's just like he goes back, goes okay, he's plants and he throws that ball and he, he catches it. I was like, that was the most one of the most beautiful mm-hmm. passes. It was that that pass and the pass that Spencer threw last year against in the first game. Where he's running somebody, right, throws it. Yes, it. that would. Those two were probably the most beautiful passes I've yeah. ever seen. And that brings up two things on my side, like Lenore Sellers. A lot of people have been talking about red shirting. I don't think there's any room for red shirting in today's college football. No, like what he showed Saturday, teams are gonna call. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, you have to keep him on. Could you team. imagine if he did actually go to Syracuse? He would no. destroy. Dude, my wife is from Syracuse. Oh, dude, God, he would. Dude. How about? I mean, how about that? I mean, oh. you know, we talk about that that sixty five yarder he threw, but how about that back shoulder that he threw? That, that yeah, to, 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 to Nick, to Nick, yeah, yeah. I was like, well, when he it. threw it, I was like, where's he throwing it? And I was like, I mean, he was on a laser. Well, the like, the the other pass that was really interesting, I think it was his first pass, the one where he comes out and the guy comes at him and he does the, the little stutter step, the dude goes yeah. that way. And then he does this short stop, just yeah, uh, it was like it's it, like clicking it from short stop to second. And it, it Honestly, goes 10, yeah. 12 yards, but it's on the money, but he's on the move, and people don't realize how hard like the the spencer throw we were talking about he's on the move to his right throws it right that ball's naturally curving to the right to the right yes but that oh, yeah. the camera angle behind him that ball goes straight yep you and i'm like play it. 
People don't realize the strength you have to have to, to force that, that ball straight. Right. Yes. Same thing with this one. He's moving to his right, and he just flips his wrist. And that ball goes, yeah. <laughs> so nonchalant. It just – it's insane. And, and, and it, But in the thing that, that I saw that I think that I was most impressed with is when he was back there, he dropped back. I couldn't tell you if he was a fifth year senior or no, a freshman. Nope. Because, because that was what I his, meant to say. Because his feet were planted and he wasn't like, oh my God, you know, looking around. He was just like back there. He had the ball. He's like, just okay, 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 going through his progression. And he saw he's just like, and bam. And there was, you know, and I'm just like, I mean, it goes back to like the, the press conference after the game. I mean, brother I sitting there, he, he brother sitting going. there laid back. <laughs> like, just, I'm like, I wasn't supposed to do that. I mean, yeah. brothers are yeah. I mean, What, what did you that. see on that play? Well, I, I was supposed to just look left, but uh, I felt like maturity. I had time, so I just went. Maturity. Yes. 100%. Yes. Maturity, and, trust in your ability. And, and, and that it, is something that we that have not gross. seen in Columbia Dude, and, in a long time. I, say, I think Connor. I mean, was, even Garcia. Connor's the closest. Yeah. Connor's the closest. yeah. But I don't think we've seen that level of maturity and calmness and just because I mean, I mean, confidence. I mean, I, it's just, is, it was just chill. I mean, he's just like, I mean, yeah, even Savelle used to take off. I mean, who do we know that's got that athleticism and poise? Right. That it's like, was amazing. It's like all the just years think of the watching, QB battle we're going to have when Dante Reno oh, gets dude. there. Dante like, Reno. I mean, it's like, it's like we're going to have back to back. NFL draft pick. Oh yeah. 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 oh, yeah. It's like one of the things that I've noticed about like the Missouri quarterbacks, they I was like, well, why are they flat footed? They're just like calm back there. They just stand yep. there. They just let everything happen. Oh, and it looks so weird. It does. It and they, so but they weird. don't get excited. Exactly. And it seems like the game is slow. Mm-hmm. And that and, and that is what I see in Lenore Sellers. And that is something that I haven't seen in Columbia in a really long time. Well, I tell you, that's what I see in Spencer lately. Yeah. Like even staying in the pocket, taking that hit, delivering it. Which like, was a targeting, by he, the way. He used happy feet all the time. Yeah. Spencer mm-hmm. used to get happy feet. Now he'll stay in there and deliver that ball. I think he's, you know, of course they've said it in the media and everything. I think he is really comfortable with this offense. And I, 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 agree. I know a lot too. of people had a lot of bad things to say about Dow uh, when we hired him and everything. If if we can figure out the line, get a running game going, this offense can be really, I, I, really, I, I, really I, good. I, I agree 100% with you, Brandon. And I think for me is like they just need to look at what – like call the plays from line back. Put those guys in a position to succeed. If it calls for like a sprint option, kind of get everything to the edges. Yep. Do that to spread everything else. So everybody, because I mean, everybody is congregated tackle to tackle. You got seven guys, you know, spread those guys out and give them some, create some, you know, artificial lane. I'm going to say artificial, but, but create lanes yeah. based on your formation. Well, and, and there's, there's ways, because we, we've seen in the past, we haven't had great offensive lines. And, and there's ways to still mask it and get production. Yes. Right. Yes. And as long as our perimeter blocks. Yes. That's and, and that's what I've noticed too. Either our wide receivers put them on their butts or our wide mm-hmm. receivers are on their butts. Yep. Right. Uh, they're, 100%. They're, they're, there's no in between. And we actually, um, it got brought up on last week's episode too. And that that is – that that's a little bit of a growing concern because it was asked, you know, why are we not bringing that up to step? That hey, perimeter blocking's a little bit of a suspect. It, and I, and I, think, those, I think it, it, I think that's tough. also I think that's also a paradigm shift from old school wide receivers like that, like say Jerry Rice when he was in college. Okay. Everybody block. Yeah. You know, now they just want to so. run, you know. 25 yard posts and you know catching oh, in space yeah. and yep. you know they don't want to touch anybody. They yeah. all have that Dion mentality. I didn't think about right. that, but you're probably right. right. You gotta have that dog mentality. Yep. 
and like XL. XL's got a dog oh, mentality. Oh, 100%. He's, he's based in. And can you imagine? And, and that's what I was just saying a second ago. We get juice healthy and we get juice oh, of last dude. year, but a year well, better and everything with yeah. XL on the outside. And then you're putting uh, Amari and Brown, which let's throw a shout out. The Gamecock well, Eats ate him up winner of up. the game. Yep. Is he all right? I think he is. Uh, from what I've heard, they said that he tried I mean, to come he back in. Right? Yeah, they, they said that he tried to come back in the game. I think he hyperextended it a little bit. Okay. Because the way he landed, it looked like it might have hyperextended some. Uh, that that's my professional doctor opinion. It's a little soreness, but yeah, uh, I think it it's one of those, and we've all done it before. Yeah, I think it scared him more than it hurt because right. when your knee pops that way, it's yes. not supposed yeah. to. Yeah, it you feel you're an athlete. Yeah, yeah, you know it. Um, uh, but from what, because because I'd posted that uh, when Beamer gave Rattler the game ball where I said, oh well, my big takeaway is. AB sitting there. You, oh, let's not talk about knees and show that one. Mm. Oh, mm. A little against uh, Georgia action here. Oh. There we go. Oh. There we DJ go. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. And uh, but I said the the one thing that I really took away from that video was AB was standing right there with his pads still on, smiling. Right. You know, yep. didn't have the crutches or anything. And somebody had commented on the post and said that he was trying to go back into the game shortly after that. So okay. Uh, I'm That's assuming he's okay and everything, but you got him in the slot, Eddie Lewis coming in behind that, Nick Harbour coming out, you know, out wide on the other, Trey Knox coming off the, the edge, and Joshua Simmons on the other side. I mean, then DK or Juju coming out of the backfield. Right. Well, if, if we Mario. get this and, – and I, I was about to go there. If, if we can get this line to be – cohesive yeah but well just <laughs> right words just like, they, don't, they don't have to be great you know we don't need the, the number one offensive line uh, uh, we just need them to come in and, and be productive yes it's still my, not the word they, they don't they don't have to be the hogs of the washington redskins right of yeah the 80s. yeah you just need i mean i mean in this day and age blocking isn't about putting people on their backs like it used to nope. be Blocking it to this day and age is, is getting away in, in the way. To. Yeah, yeah, getting exactly. in the way. Getting in the way. Yep. I mean, you don't really have to move people. You know, you just put nope. that butt in the way and let yep. that running back come right here. Yeah, that, that's all. Nowadays, it is. yeah. Nowadays, all it takes is a second. One yes. second makes a difference. That's because that's I mean, it. I remember back in the day, somebody that ran a four seven was absolutely blistering fast. Now linebackers, two hundred fifty pound linebackers, four, four seven. Yeah. yeah, easy. Yeah, easy. Yes. So well, you don't really have to, you, yeah. you don't have time to put people in the back. Just get in the way. Yeah. And I'll well, tell it, you, that's one thing from last game. Stone Blanton was it in the first quarter when their quarterback ran out to off. the left. Stone Blanton's got some speed. He, he's he's that big, brother. He, he's right balling. now. Like, he, I deal with bodybuilders all the time, and their oxygen levels are crazy lower. But if Stone can keep his breath, well, so, so he, he he's dropped some weight speed. this year. He dropped he weight. I think they said he's at uh, he's down in the two thirties this year. Oh wow! Okay, yeah, he he's, he, he's dropped speed. about ten pounds because they said he was over two forty five ish. Really? Yeah. Uh, so he's uh, down he's down in the two thirties. He needs to. Be I honestly thought he was going to kill that from a quarterback. In the all right. right. <laughs> he, he, he was all speed <laughs> is crazy. Well, and, and that's the thing. Actually, we'll, we'll get on the linebackers here in a second. Okay. Uh, you, you made the comment, you know, all the line has to do, turn, let, you know, let the running back come by. Running backs. Mario Anderson. I, you know, it, 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 and that's the, the argument with DK is everybody, you know, is him not being a running back. Does he have to catch up to the speed? No. At the same argument, Mario has experience. He's right. the he's a bigger back. Do we wait? Do we keep putting DK in and wait for him to catch up to it? Or do you you put Mario in? Who looked? Who looked again? It's Furman. It's Furman. Right. No, no. I, I, a little bit better. At, Furman you know, returned eleven out of you know all their starters. Mm-hmm. But but also that wasn't but also I think all state you know right but but also I think I think running back 
is a mentality. You have, mm -hmm. you know, you have this mindset. Whereas if you play, you know, receiver like DK or, or you know, he's playing or, or some quarterback, being a running back is a little, little different mentality. Yep. And I think, you know, looking back, like, like, let's like say, say Marcus, he was a running back. He played like a running back. Yeah. Yep. There was no doubt in That's my mind. He was a running back. You're talking about pad level. You're talking about he was running downhill. As much as I love DK, it's, it's, it's that, that running back transition from receiver or whatever position he was same. listed at is, is just different. Well, I, I think a lot too is, and people go, oh, well, he ran the ball a ton in the Wildcat. Well, Still, it's not a running back. Well, and, no. and a lot of those plays were short yardage situations. It was things. So it was, you know, your pick go to try to pick up one or two yards. Yeah. So if he ran into the back of an offensive lineman and just fell forward, it didn't really. It's the first down. Right. Uh, I'm with you on this one where with the running back, you've got to expect the hole to open, be patient with it, and then hit it versus, oh, well, I'm. Just gonna, gonna, we're just gonna run up his back. Run yeah, and yeah. and that was the thing that I saw with Mario. And again, I, I'm not. We don't see what's in practice. We don't see what happened at every other <laughs> scrimmage that they ever did. Um, but Mario, a lot of times, he was about to hit that hole. Saw saw one move out left, went whoop, whoop, and was gone. Yeah, uh, you know he he looks more like a natural running back. Because he is, yeah, uh, agreed. And and it's not it's not a slide on anybody. It just nope. it just kind of is what it is, you know. Yep. And, no, and, Mario hits it with power. Like yeah. the way he hit yeah. that hole was what you need. Like DK's great. I love and DK, DK had some really good runs Saturday too. I will never talk oh, bad absolutely. about DK. I love him one hundred percent. To be a gamecock means DK and join yeah. and uh, Dottie. Cool. I mean that's what it is. But him and Braswell, they hit the hole so different, right? Yes. Like and we were talking DK, about the future looking bright earlier. Right? Braswell yeah. looked like, really good. DK gained weight. Don't get me wrong. He looks massive. He looked the part. I think he's slow, think a little slower. slowed him down. Yeah. And so, like, if you go back and watch it, like, there's so many holes that could have been. Uh, we were third and four. If he busts right, he's gone. Touchdown yeah. against mm -hmm. Furman. And, and, and I, I think, think too that's that's just a vision thing. That, that's that, that's, that's exactly what I was going to exactly say. Of where you're used to just going here and okay, just just get that yard. Yeah, seven yards cut, right? Yeah. Yep. yeah, yeah. I mean, it's yeah. like how many times do we see Marcus? You know, he would like oh, dip in, dude. and all of a sudden he would look up. Oh, I there can look is. up here, there and it is, boop. he's that's you know gone. right. And and, right. I, and and I think it was a. I think honestly, I think it's a vision thing. Yeah, for you know, with DK because yeah. he has. And as, I don't want to say it's tunnel vision, but he. I just he's don't think he's opened it. He he has right because he goes this part of play is supposed it, to go to here. Well, and this I don't is like where we've I'm all like we've all said too. I would be glad it. to be wrong with this, uh, and and I would I would one hundred percent be happy if he pops out one hundred and ninety five yards Saturday. Oh, dude, one hundred percent. I will crown him the, the greatest quarter uh, running back we've had. I, I'll be I'll be yeah. glad to do that. Yes. Uh, it, it, and I, I truly believe he does have the talent to where he could oh, yeah. be that yes. guy. Yes. I'm afraid for be. him, he just got thrown in all these different positions and stuff he, over time. He was never yeah. able to settle into a yeah. home. I, I think if that yeah. first move would have been to, to run him back three, four years ago, would and be we're, we're looking at right now. A different situation. I, I, well, I, I don't think we'd have any issues. Right. In a uh, way, he, yes. He's, has a game and a half under his I belt. I think he's had to look at the game from multiple different views, right? Yeah. He's had to look at it from a wide receiver view. How do I get open versus a QB? How do I find that open yep. man? How do I lead them, right? And then running back, it's like half second, you got to change. Yeah. And I think he's just a little slow coming up to the speed, but – I mean, he showed he's got the vision. Oh, he he's got it. He, he's got yeah, every tool he, he needs. He might be. Right. A I, I think slow. by the I think by the I think by the end of the year, 
the the DK that we see now will be vastly different mm-hmm. than the DK yep. that plays against Clemson yep. or Kentucky. Yeah. And that's one thing about South Carolina. We always get better. We don't ever get worse minus that one season, six and zero. Oh. Yeah. But we always get better. And especially under Beamer, we've tended to get better. Yeah. So what's to come? Who knows, man? Mario Anderson running it. Yeah. Who knows? Well, as we're talking about what's to come, Georgia's to come. <laughs> and before we get to the Georgia breakdown, we're going to send it back to Mitch to see what the oh, weather yeah. forecast <laughs> in Athens is going to be. You guys are doing well out there. I want to give you a quick forecast on what to expect weather-wise in Athens, Georgia, this coming Saturday as the South Carolina Gamecocks play the Georgia Bulldogs. Expecting a pretty decent day, but I do think there will be a chance of some showers and storms out there. Will it happen right at game time? You know, we don't know that kind of information, but I do think there will be a chance. It's definitely not going to be a day where – Uh, There's no rain expected. I definitely think there could be some storms around that could affect a game and tailgating. But highs should be around the 80s. Nothing too unbearable. Nothing in the 90s or anything like that. But definitely watch out for those showers and storms. But that's all I got, guys. Let's pull the unthinkable Saturday afternoon in Athens and let's bring home that dub. Go Gamecock. Appreciate it, Mitch. Yeah, looks like depending on whether we can dodge the rain or not, it should be a cool day. Again, kind of a strange September of football this year where we have not wished for death during a game. And who would have ever thought that a September Georgia early afternoon game might be pleasant weather-wise? The three hottest games I've ever been to. Georgia, Georgia, Georgia. Georgia, Georgia, Georgia. (laughs) I refuse. I tell people I, I refuse to ever go to another oh. Georgia noon game because I, <laughs> whether it's I, it, noon or three thirty, no, those were the hottest it. games I've ever been to in my life. Not doing it. Call me a crappy <laughs> fan, do whatever. I'm going to be happy in my my house in AC. Air I'll be the crappiest, most comfortable fan on the planet. Don't bother me. Absolutely. But we we're going on the road. I, I I'll. You know, again, we've kind of addressed the North Carolina game, what happened there. Yeah, it was a test. We failed, whatever. Um, I think the North Carolina game, if we go on a run this year, people will go, okay, it was week one. Mm -hmm. And they had a lot of pieces they were plugging in. That kind of stuff happens. Uh, Going into Athens – to face the number one in the nation back-to-back national titles. This is a real, real, real test. This is big boy football. This is big boy football, and uh, they got some big boys. Um, When we were doing the predictions, I'll I'll bring it back up. Uh, Obviously, replacing Stetson Bennett. Mm -hmm. Obviously, I think we all wish bad things on their new offensive coordinator. Uh, I think one of the bigger issues, I really don't wish bad things on them except on the football field. Well, Their defensive coordinator yeah. can have bad yeah. things on the football field as well. Uh, they're replacing three offensive linemen, replacing three linebackers and three defensive backs. Another thing that I actually saw earlier, and this, this is going to be a, a big question for you, Chuck. Georgia, after two games – and it's arguably not the toughest schedule in the nation that the first two games that they had are 86 <laughs> in the nation, 86 or 89, somewhere in there in the nation in quarterback pressure. Yep. Against ball One state sack. and right. whoever their other game was. They play UT Martin. Yeah. UT yeah. Martin. Yep. Um, one sack. So one sack high eighties on quarterback pressure. We, we've we been talking about the offensive line play a ton. Uh, obviously, that's going to be a huge, 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 huge part of this game Saturday mm-hmm. is our offensive line versus what type of pressure they can bring up. Right. We all know Muschamp's going to try to dial mm-hmm. this one up a little bit extra. Sure. Yeah. Uh, Chuck, you've watched them a little bit more. My question is, 
are they where they're at stat wise because they haven't had to dial anything up and they're just like, Hey, you know, we're going to go out here. We're going to go handle business, go on with it. Or they've replaced a lot of guys and the same argument. Yes. They're replacing them with more four and five star guys. Absolutely. The right. same argument. It's them getting their first start. It's also going to be them getting their first sec start in these positions. Yep. Um, so is it a little bit of them having some, I don't want to say growing pains because they, they've already grown to the biggest monster right. in the house, yeah. but is it more of a, that would have sounded I'm really bored. cool if I actually had something to follow up with that, huh? Yeah. You, you know I mean, where I'm going bored. with that. Yeah. yeah. You know, you know I, where I'm going with that. I do. You I mean, Chuck? watching them, um, I, I think, I think it's twofold. I think one, they didn't need to, for right. one thing, and I, you know, watching their schemes, they didn't look like they needed to scheme to bring pressure. They didn't need, like they needed to, you know, you know, put people on island to put, you know, seven right. in the box. You know, they just never everything looked vanilla. You know, there there was no. We're not going to show anything, right? Which is which that. is. I yep. mean, honestly, I mean, and I one get of the it. things one of the I things I heard a lot. Because I mean, I went to the UT Martin game, and I heard a lot of people saying Bobo's going to Bobo, you know. Yeah. Um, right. And I think Mustang. I, I honestly don't think they showed a lot because they didn't have to. Yeah. Right. Now. One hundred percent. Now this week might be a different story. Mm-hmm. But um, what can Beck take? Right. That I don't think I don't think we know why they can. Mm-hmm. That's it. They haven't pressured. They haven't had to. Well, and, exactly, and, and that's why too. So as we get here, what what was the the spread, Chuck? It's twenty seven and a half. half. Twenty seven and a half. half. I, I I don't I don't bet and stuff. If I did, and, and I don't I don't think this is being a homer. If I did, I would take us in the points all day long. I, 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 Just I, for the I, simple I, fact I of they've got so many new players. New quarterback, new system, all, all that. Like, can they come out and beat the brakes off of us? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Can, can we go I in mean, there and they crumble and we beat the brakes off of them like we did Tennessee? Yep. Yeah. Like, uh, you know, it, that's why you play the game. That's and, right. and that's a whole other side. It drives me absolutely bonkers when fans go into games like, oh, we don't have a chance. You're a fan. Why Why? Why are you going in with that aspect? I, mean, okay. I, was, play in, play I was in the right? stands in 2009 when we beat number four in the country. was in the stands in 2010 when we beat number one in the country. Mm-hmm. So I, I just – this is the, – the saying, this is why you play the game. Oh, and that reminded me, okay. the, the saying that I was going to say earlier that my JV coach said constantly, and it, I absolutely hate it because he said it. Every single game, whether we won or lost, and every single game, whether we won by one or won by like 10, he would say in sports, when you lose, you're not as bad as you think you are. And when you win, you're not as good as you think you are. Oh, 100%. I agree with that 100%. I I think after North Carolina, we all felt terrible. Yeah. We weren't that bad. bad We we weren't that bad. No. And now we're kind of on a high right now. And we're not that good either. We're not that good. That's right. I mean, we, we yeah. are that good. <laughs> we we should have. We are. We been firm. And that's the thing, too. We are. Yeah. And, and, and that's the thing, too. And I, I said it with uh, Charlotte last year, South Carolina State. Yes, we should have beaten Furman the way that we did. Teams in the past wouldn't have, though. But how many times have we played Furman and won by 10? Yeah. And, and, and that's the argument. When you win a game like this the way that we did, people say, well, you should have. Mm-hmm. But if you don't, then you've got questions. Uh, so me with, with Saturday, like I will never go into a game saying we're going to lose this game. Yep. Now I did, I'll admit Tennessee and Clemson last year. I kind yeah, of went in a little indifferent. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, you know, I'm like, Hey, I'm going to watch the ball game. Yeah, see how it shakes out. But, 10 games in. Yeah. I, I, I don't understand as a fan going in with the we're going to lose mentality. You literally have nothing on the line except right. your fanhood. Right. <laughs> no faith. Right. I um, mean, I mean, if I was, I mean, I remember in the first, you know, we went through the, 
the uh, the schedule of picking wins. The only loss I picked was against Georgia, and it wasn't because I thought we were going to get our teeth kicked in. It's more so the bad, bad national top champions. They, 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 I mean, they have, you know, they have the second, and third string. They have, yes, you know, yes, you know, they have the depth that's, that we don't. That's have. the question for Saturday. Yes, and and that's where same episode where we were talking. Uh, I think we have. I believe we have the talent in our stars, which is another issue: our injuries. Nikki, you know, yeah. is uh is AB playing? Where's Juice actually at? Uh, so we we have some some injuries that are are ones are questionable. I, I truly believe our starters are as good as anybody else in the country, and oh, we can go yeah. up and we can compete yep. ones on ones with anybody. Yep. Where that's going to change is Beamer still building the back end. Yes, you know, we have two deep. We have three deep in some positions but that not, can come out, and we can do it. But but can you not tell me how many that totality that some of these teams have. Didn't you say one? Mm-hmm. Can you Just tell? Say, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, like, exactly. When, like 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 you like like us, we have a like our second string is a three a good three star. But you got somebody like another five. Georgia, they're, they're, they're backup is a right. is, there's two five stars. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. And, so so that's. And, you know, no, go for I it. mean that's that I mean that's here or there, right? So five stars don't always pan no. out to be first first round draft picks, right? No. So that's neither here nor there. So if we're even at yeah. the actual playing level, I mean that's a plus. Yeah, I I think and like I said, this is the toughest game on the schedule this year. Yep. Yeah, we're, no we're not, no. I, I'm I'm also not the fan of oh we're going to go in here and beat them by 89. No, no. Uh, but for Saturday, my thought is oh nice crotch shot. <laughs> I, I got to call Sorry. you. Sorry. No, no, you're fine. Dog, uh, the dog um, wanted to go in. I'm giving you <laughs> hell. Uh, my my thought for Saturday: be competitive in the game. Yep. All the way through. Yep. If we can get to the fourth quarter and, it's and, close. and we're within a possession, yeah. even, you know, maybe, yeah. maybe 10 points or so. I think 10 points. I, I will bet the house on Spencer Radler yeah. every time. Yep. And the other reason I'm, I'm here is the end of the first half and what I've always asked for coaches – when you have a minute and a half, two minutes on the clock, other team has the ball and you got three timeouts and you let them run it and you you jog into the the tunnels at halftime and you you know nil the ball with thirty two seconds on the clock. Just to defeat his mentality. Just throw yep. it one time. That's it. Just try. try. Just the smallest try. They go, yes. Oh well, you could fumble it. Late. You could fumble it every other play yeah, of the game, time. or you could score a touchdown, or you could right. score a touchdown. Exactly. We right. went what they say seventy-five yards or sixty-five mm-hmm. yards, whatever it was on that last drive, in less than thirty seconds. Yes, right. It was, yeah, because we put it in in Spencer Rattler's hand and said, right. "Go make a play," which is which is something that we, with our previous OC. He seemed to have a problem when making Any sure that our playmakers got the ball. Yes. Right. Whereas on that drive, we made sure our playmakers right, yeah. got the ball, well, which I think is a glaring difference. Yeah. Well, in, so in, I in, think – No, go for it. Go ahead. No, no, you got it. I was going to say Dow Loggins, he seems to, as soon as we get a first down, that very first first down, he's gone. Like yeah. tempo, tempo, tempo. This is the yeah. offense we were promised – when Beamer yes, exactly. came exactly with Satterfield, yeah. so we never got, and Nebraska's not getting either. So <laughs> I feel bad. Dude, I, 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 I want to say, I want to say, I want to say, Nebraska, a thank you note so bad. Exactly. Well, yeah. well Nebraska. I love how Tennessee and Clemson. That, that may have not have been an actual coach, just Nebraska right? come get him. But, <laughs> exactly. That, that may have been a little bit more mutual than anything. Right. But um, the other thing that I. It, this is what I like about Beamer is he comes off as a fan that oh, is a yeah. coach that has a ton of football knowledge because he does all the things we all scream for. You know, right. 
it's fourth and one. Just run up to the line, snap it real go quick. Yeah. And then that's yeah. what we do. Or you or you go for it. Our fans throw a fake play in here. He throws a fake play. And, and he made the comment too. So at, at, on that drive, as we got down, there were seven seconds left. And he said, he told Spencer, he said, hey, we have no timeouts. We have nothing. We can kick a field goal here, but this next play has to be quick. And it either has to be completed for a touchdown or incomplete, but it has to be quick. And he goes, yep. Spencer was like, yep, got it. All right, let's go. And he trusts his guys, but, you know, to, to put that out there and say, hey, yes, we have time for two plays, but we only have time for two plays if these outcomes happen. Yep. And, and I just – I love the way that everything is shaping around this team. And again, like like I said earlier, it's frustrating a little bit to say we got to be a little patient with Beamer and his program and everything because I think we all see, oh, we're 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 just you see, so we close. see the yes. So yeah. And but but getting back to Saturday, if this is the old Spurrier. I love playing Georgia the second week of the year because they always got, you know, at least three guys that are suspended. If we're going to play Georgia, this is the perfect time of the year to get them. I wouldn't have mind, you know, maybe last week, which at the same time, it gives us an extra week to get our offensive line figured out. But they've got so many guys that are new, mm -hmm. similar to us. Uh, so if we're going to catch them, I would rather catch them early before they may have everything ironed the gel, out. The gel, yeah. Um, yep. And I think, at least I hope, I think we're going to come out with a little extra chip Saturday. I, I think so too. Because of a certain comment that was made yep. to the media. We're not made. And don't call a certain player out. I, I don't – and people's like, oh, well, you know, coaches have said – yeah, coaches have said, hey, you know, Peyton Manning, the quarterback of Tennessee, is a really good quarterback. You know, it, it's one thing when you say a player's name and you're like, hey, you know, we got to watch him because he's really good. Right. But that whole scene was set up. You could tell it was set up by Kirby, had a little smirk on his face when he said it. But for me, on a – in the world we live in right now where everybody is so on edge, I don't like calling out an opposing player by name yep. and whether you are responding to it or not, you said his name yep. and everybody in every clip is saying his name, his name. And you said he called our fans out. Yep. Because no, what I that's going to do is no, when, no, my question is, hold on, hold on one second. Hold on one second. Hold, hold on one second. Uh, so, my issue with it is, and, and we've all got our beverage here, you get there on Saturday and you get a bunch of us Southern rednecks, we get our, our drinks in us and stuff, and you put us in a college football situation, you have that guy there that you have been told for a week now, oh, he said y'all ain't crap. He said, he said y'all ain't loud. And that's when stuff balls over. Yeah. And, but it's unnecessary. You're the defending – Two-time national champion. This is your very first real home game of the year against any team with a heartbeat. Why do you need motivation? Right, you should. If you if you and need fabricated motivation, you got more issues in your locker room. And I'll say, the person who asked that question was a student reporter. So that was a student, not a professional, but still. No, no. Well, and, and, and again. It, 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 you could tell it was a little bit of loaded, but my issue and, and, and some of the, the people that came out, they're like, oh, well, he, he said his name because the reporter brought it up. Got it. That's fine. Yeah. It wasn't the first part of the exactly. answer that I had the yep. issue. It was yep. that last line where he yep. said, well, I guess Tonka, Tonka called him yep. all out. 100%. Yep. That was him bringing it up. That was him calling him out by name. Exactly. Yep. I agree. And that shouldn't happen. And that's why – we we know with this staff they see everything that happens on yep. social media. Mm -hmm. No, I agree. And, and even and, like and they're they're spreading that in the locker room of hey, they're coming after your brother. Yep. 100%. And I followed the Georgia just because, you know, 
the Tonka Hemingway. So a lot of them agree that it was taken out, you know, of context. You know, he was just answering a question. He yeah. was asked what Tonka said. Now, right? has Tonka actually played in Sanford Stadium? He has not. That's the key. Uh, he has not. Has he not? No. He has not played. 2009? No. Hmm. So, the only stadium, and, and even, what was her name? Uh, Kwamu, the cheerleader. Israel? Oh, no. no, the cheerleader. I don't know. Uh, Maria. Oh, I, I don't I know who you're talking said, about. Like, stadium, like, Georgia doesn't get that loud. Yeah, pe- people don't. They're open air. Yes. Like, yes. you don't get that loud. Well, that's I why mean, the the uh, school in the upstate, that's why they get as loud as they do because their exactly. bleachers are literally it's straight up. Yeah, it, it, it's like, straight 100%. up. 100%. Like, yeah. uh, yep. But we'll uh, – we, I think we're getting close to that that hour straight uh, – what? That, what? what? <laughs> that, that hour marker. Uh, so so we'll, we'll wrap it up here. Steven, what, what do you, we, we won't do scores because I'm never good at it. Um, what, what what do you think of a Saturday? We have to move the line. I think we have to do like ski something to move the line because Spencer on the move. I mean, best quarterback in the league. Mm-hmm. So if we get Spencer on the move, I think we can get over the top of Georgia, and with our defense. I mean, Carson Beck's never been pressured. He hasn't had someone in his face over and over. 21-17, Gamecocks. I think it's good. Oh, I think it's going to be a lot closer than yeah. – much closer than, than Vegas has. But what, what are you thinking there, Chuck? I, I'm, I'm thinking the same thing. I, I really think that, you know, our linebacking core is going to be – going to set the tone. I think if they have a good game where they can, you know, be disruptive and be mobile, um, I think the defense will actually, you know, will will do what they need to do. And I think Stone and those guys will mm-hmm. will, will stand up. And honestly, I I, I, I think Stephen's right. I think we got to move move the line, like get Spencer in space, get our running backs in space, and try not to run tackle tackle when when at the current moment that is not our forte. Yeah. Right. So, so I think if we spread the line out, get, you know, scheme in lanes of like for passing or running, I think that is going to put us in a in a in a position to succeed. All right, rip the bandaid off. Um, I, I'm still saying, you know, I'm saying 35, 28, dogs. Yep. And, and again, I, I think that's probably. Touchdown to two, either way. I think I just don't see a four touchdown game. Can it happen? Uh, yes. No. I just I've already bet. Yeah. I just <laughs> I, I can't see it. Uh, I've already kind of spilled the beans. I think I think we stay competitive, and yeah. and if we can stay competitive into the fourth quarter, which I believe we can, I think we have a shot. And then you look at special teams plays. What's going to happen here? Uh, obviously, we're going to go into every single game with the better special teams. Yeah. Yeah. You get into the fourth quarter, potential blocked field goal, punt, you know, pin somebody back. Anything can happen. That's right. I'm not going to throw a score on it. I think you're both about right with my thoughts right. around the, the mid-20s to 30s to maybe mid-30s for both teams. I, I'm always going to pick us to win, so so that's that's my theory. More than likely, you know, we we might see a Mitch Jeter field goal at the last second to pull it out. Can I throw a touchdown? Yeah, yeah there we go. <laughs> That'll work too. Uh, so so we'll we'll see. We're we're just a few days away. Stephen, you're the newbie, so as we sign off, you got to do your best demo impression with your deep go Gamecocks. So on three, one, two, three. Go Gamecocks! There we go.